We have breaking news now. President Biden is speaking at the White House about the strong September jobs report. Let's listen. I've taken office. We've created 13.9 million new jobs. You heard me say it before. I'm going to keep saying it. My dad had an expression. He said, Joey, a job's about a lot more than a paycheck. It's about your dignity. It's about respect. It's about being able to look your kid in the eye and say, honey, it's going to be okay and mean it. Well, 336,000 more Americans, if they have children, can say that to their children and mean it. <clears throat> the unemployment rate has stayed below 4 percent for 20 months in a row, the longest stretch in 50 years. We've achieved a 70-year low in unemployment rate for women, record lows in unemployment for African Americans and Hispanic workers, and people with disabilities, folks who have been left behind in previous recoveries and left behind for too long. We have the highest share of working-age Americans in the workforce in 20 years. And it's no accident. It's Bidenomics. We're growing the economy from the middle out, the bottom up, not the top down. And inflation is coming down at the same time. It's down 60 percent since last summer. Core inflation was just 2.2 percent over the past three months. And now we have the lowest inflation of any major economy in the world. Today, we're celebrating National Manufacturing Day. We didn't name it that. It was already National Manufacturing Day, but it seems appropriate. I can think of no better way to mark the occasion than to thank the 13 million Americans who are manufa in manufacturing jobs as we speak. They're restoring our pride, making things in America. And today, I want to highlight that of those 13 million manufacturing jobs, 815,000 of those jobs were created since I took office, twice as many as the previous administration. And report what we learned earlier this week, that spending on construction for new factories being built to generate more economic growth and jobs hit an all-time high last month. Folks, Bidenomics is about investing in America and investing in American workers. And businesses are investing more in manufacturing than ever before and are bringing the supply chains home. Before the pandemic, supply chains was a phrase most people didn't even associate with, didn't think much about. And uh, but today, after a few uh, delays in availability of parts and products everyone has known about, they know why it's so important. My economic plan is bringing supply chains home and investing in industries of the future so we can make things in America again with American workers. We're creating good jobs in communities all across the country, including in places that have been left behind for the last, in some cases, 20 years, because the factories they used to work at for years and years shut down, leaving them with no options, no jobs in that community, all over the Midwest and all over the Northeast. That under Bidenomics, you won't have to leave home now to get a good job. I don't know how many times I heard and out on the road people saying, my kid came up to me, got a decent education in the state, came up to me and said, Mom, I got to leave. No jobs. No jobs. Well, you're going to be able to find a good job close to home more and more all across America. We're also making sure the jobs we're creating offer workers a free and fair right, if they choose, to join a union, to form a union. Bidenomics is leading the surge in unionized workers exercising their collective bargaining rights. For example, our, our clean school bus program under the bipartisan infrastructure law is replacing dirty diesel buses with clean electric buses so children getting on and off those buses can bring clean air, not diesel fuel. We're encouraging the companies building those buses to allow their employees to unionize if the employees choose. And it's working. We saw in Georgia when at Blue, workers at Bluebird, the electric school bus manufacturing company that's receiving federal funds, voted to unionize because that was their choice. The Treasury Department laid out recently in a major report that unions and collective bargaining are good for the economy overall. They help raise wages not only for the workers in that factory, but for everyone, whether or not they're a union, whether or not you belong to a union. And they also increase, uh, 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 excuse me, they also increase corporate uh, growth. And today's job report is just another example of what it looks like when we focus on building an economy from the middle out and the bottom up, not the top down, while bringing deficits down at the same time. 
You know, just this summer, I signed a strong bipartisan law where I shook hands with the former speaker. And uh, we passed in the House and the Senate as well to cut spending by $1 trillion over the next 10 years. Unfortunately, last weekend, Republican House members decided they were going to put that progress in jeopardy. Instead of honoring that commitment they made, they once again brought us to the brink of a government shutdown, creating unnecessary instability and risk in order to secure more extreme cuts in programs that help working Americans and seniors. Cuts that would have hurt everyone from you know, hurt U.S. manufacturing, that would have stymied the pay of military people, a whole range of things. They tried cutting funding by 30 percent for small businesses, which are growing under our administration, for local manufacturers, for manufacturing extension partnership program that, that helps small and medium-sized manufacturers <coughs> attract and train workers and grow their businesses. But we stopped them. Quite frankly, I'm sick and tired of Republicans in the House saying they want to cut the deficit when all they really want to do is once again cut taxes for the very wealthy and big corporations, which will only add to the deficit. When I was able to cut the federal debt by $1.7 trillion over that first two, and a, two years, well, remember what we were talking about. Those 50 corporations that made $40 billion weren't paying a penny in taxes. Well, guess what? We made them pay 30 percent, 15 percent in taxes, 15 percent. Nowhere near what they should pay. And guess what? We were able to pay for everything, and we end up with a actual surplus. You know, it's not about — it's not what the economy needs right now, more tax cuts for the wealthy. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. We've cut the deficit by over $1 trillion since we've taken office. The laws that I sign will cut it by another $1 trillion over the next 10 years. And my budget would cut it by another $2.5 trillion over 10 years. Here's the deal. The federal debt went up by 50 percent under my predecessor in part because he passed a $2 trillion tax cut overwhelmingly skewed to the very wealthy and large corporations. I believe we should be reducing the deficit by making sure that the wealthy and large corporations can just pay their fair share. I'm not going to pay 90 percent. Just pay their fair share by cutting wasteful spending on special interests like big oil, all the money they made and paid so little in taxes. Big pharma, same thing. You know, we just gave the American public a real gift in terms of what — not gift, but fairness — in terms of what they have to pay for insulin and what they're going to have to pay for other things. Well, guess what? That, always, that also cut the federal debt. Cut the federal debt. For example, over a thousand billionaires in this country — and I know you're going to hear me say this until I'm able to change it — you know what their average rate of pay — the federal tax rate is? Eight percent. Eight percent. I think you should be able to be a trillionaire, a billionaire, a zillionaire if you want, but pay your taxes, for God's sake. Pay some fair — and remember, somebody approaching a fair tax. That's less than a teacher or a firefighter or a cop pays in their taxes. It's just wrong. Look, House Republicans should put us back in a — shouldn't put us back in a crisis mode again. <clears throat> we have only 40 days for Congress to get back to work. They're on the same House Republicans on recess now — to fund the government avoid a shutdown, and protect the tremendous gains American workers have made over the past two and a half years. Shutdown would mean troops don't get paid. Air traffic controllers wouldn't get paid. There'd be all kinds of problems at airports. Loans to small businesses would be delayed, and closing some of them. It's time to stop fooling around. House Republicans, it's time for you to do your job, continue our progress, growing the economy, investing in America, investing in the American people. So let's get to work for the American people. They're waiting and they're watching. We got to get to work. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.